Um, her child was born in November, and in May, uh, a county judge gave the infant to another couple while they litigated this case. Um, <clears throat> this was in May 2008. I just read the update in March that she got her child back. Um, she was also being, uh, she was also under deportation proceedings because she was undocumented. So it's, you know, and, and I know you see these every day, but it again, it's sort of an illustration of how these, these issues intersect in people's lives. And so um, the last thing I want to show you is I'm actually going to play you this short video, <clears throat> hopefully. <laughs> this is by Breakthrough, which is a human rights organization that does a lot of media work. Is our sound on? Yes. prendió las luces y nos abrilló a dos personas y este fue a mi cargo y este me pidió este licencia de manejar y como yo no tengo licencia de manejar le enseñé la matrícula consular y la registración del carro me dijo a mí el policía a mí nunca me dijo por qué me iba a arrestar que qué es lo que había hecho o no me dijo nada pues es siempre uno mal y como le digo yo este al policía le rogué que no me llevara a la cárcel porque me faltaban de tres a cuatro días para aliviarme al bebé, pero es ni eso, este, no, hombre, no, no sé ni decirle con usted, ni porque también mis hijos los dejé llorando en el carro, me sentía muy mal. This case is, first of all, uh, an immigration case, but it didn't start out that way. It started out as a simple traffic stop. She was stopped. She was given a ticket for careless driving that still has not been explained to Juana. But when she was asked for her driver's license, she was not able to produce one. The preference for law enforcement in Tennessee is to give a person without a driver's license a citation. In this particular case, the officer decided to take Juana into custody. Uh, despite the fact that she was uh, eight and a half months pregnant and had three children with her in the car. Este, se me rompió la, la fuente de, para este, tener a mi bebé. Y este, me llevaron en la ambulancia, y en la ambulancia me llevaron este, esposada de las manos y de los pies. Cuando llegamos al hospital, que me subieron a la cama para, este, cuando carreras que suben a la cama, me tuvieron esposada de de la de esa mano y del pie una esa fue una sheriff una mujer fue ese día fue el domingo en la tarde este la enfermera fue este y yo le dije que le dije a la sheriff que quería ir al baño y, y la la sheriff dijo que no y entonces la enfermera le preguntó que por qué ahora dice es que eso es mi trabajo ella tiene que ir al baño así con las esposas puestas en los pies el martes este la enfermera me llevó una popa para sacarme la leche y este Entonces yo le dije a la enfermera que este, le dijera al sheriff que si me la podía llevar a la cárcel y el sheriff le dijo que no, que eso no me la, no, no me la podía llevar. Entonces cuando me regresaron a la cárcel yo toda esa noche no pude dormir porque tenía mis pechos este, con mucha leche y este, yo a las 10 de la noche ya me dolían demasiado mis pechos y yo le dije al, al, al que va a dar las, este, las pastillas, le dije por favor, le digo me puedes dar Tylenol para el dolor y no me quiso dar lo único que me dio fue la, la pastilla prenatal. Nashville has a 287G program in which ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, contracts with local law enforcement and we're going to be calling upon the sheriff to be more responsible and accountable for his actions and we're going to be calling on ICE to have more stringent standards on how uh, people are treated when in custody Por decir, me vine el domingo, tuve tres días en el hospital. Hasta, no me regresaron hasta el martes. En el hospital no me dejaron, este, cuando mi esposo no estuvo en el parto, yo en el hospital siempre estuve sola. Siempre, siempre me tuvieron incomunicada. Cada cuarto que me cambiaban, el, el sheriff luego desconectaba el teléfono y lo sacaba. 
como le, es que yo no supe si a mi hijo se lo van a entregar a mi esposo, como no me, a mi esposo no lo van a dejar verme. Este, yo no supe si se lo habían entregado a él o no, le digo como no me dejaban hablar por teléfono ni nada. I share that with you and a lot of my examples really in this work are about immigration because um, in the last four years that I've been with Sister Song and been doing reproductive justice trainings and gotten significant requests to do trainings with um, Latino communities in the South and elsewhere, I cannot go and talk about reproductive justice without immigration being the first thing that I talk about, the first thing we talk about. Um, and I think that there's no way to sort of order what oppressions that people are suffering. But what I know from living in Georgia and um, in the last four years when they have implemented, some counties have implemented 287G agreements, is that um, it just creates a climate of fear. And so if people won't leave their homes, they won't go to the clinic for anything. They will only get to the hospital when it's the absolute last result. And so um, I think it's really important to recognize that. And again, I'm sure that as providers, um, you may be seeing this. I know you had a huge raid here in Iowa, and I imagine that that must have um, just had rippling effects for up till now, or I don't know when. Um, so these are, these are some of the um, issues of reproductive oppression that we're looking at today. And we could go on, and I'm sure you have examples that um, you could share, and they would all um, be equally heartbreaking. And um, they're all what we are equally working toward in our movement for reproductive justice, uh, working against, sorry. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do base our work in a human rights framework. Um, and human rights, I think in the United States, we American citizens tend not to really look at human rights in a domestic context. We look at human rights as something that other people in other countries are being denied. Um, we tend to operate more on civil rights here in this country because we had an extensive movement, movements of civil rights. Um, but civil rights only goes as far as sort of what the Constitution, what we are afforded by the Constitution as citizens of this country. Whereas human rights um, was, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was developed at the United Nations following World War II, sort of as a response um, to what was um, a, a government's failure to protect its own citizens, and not only failure to protect, but an actual, when they were violating their <coughs> own citizens' human rights, um, referring to, of course, the, the Holocaust in, um, in Europe. Um, and human rights are uh, guidelines under which every society lives, and it's sort of these rules that we operate on based on our status as human beings. So it has nothing to do with anyone's citizenship. It has to do with who you are as a human and you have the, um, where is it? Uh, they're based upon what are considered the conditions necessary for a life of dignity. And so when you look at it that way, you can really reevaluate sort of our own policies <laughs> and what's going on in our country now and ask, um, do we create the conditions for what is necessary for a life of dignity for all human beings that are present in this country? <clears throat> Um, and so these are the eight categories that are recognized as human rights. And um, you know we have civil, civil rights, which are rights to non-discrimination, political rights, which are rights to um, vote, free speech, freedom of assembly, economic rights, which is your right to a livable wage, the right to um, having your labor valued, right to organize, um, right for labor organizing. Social um, human rights are right to health care, food, shelter, education, welfare. Um, cultural human rights, the rights to language, religion, um, your culture, your traditions. Environmental rights are the rights to clean air, water, and um, the right to live, work, and play in non-contaminated areas. <clears throat> Developmental rights are the rights to control your own natural resources. And sexual rights are the right to determine the timing, size, and composition of, your, of one's own family and the right to your sexual identity. <clears throat> 